hair shrunk in the wash, as you can see. Now I've just come over to have a couple of hours swinging, and I'll, behind me, behind this tree line, there's black currant fields, and all over there, there's black currant fields. And I've just seen the farmer on the black currant fields, and he said, I've seen what you do here. You help yourself, mate. Hey! More permissions. Fantastic. Let's go and find some history. Come on, come on. You know what? I think I'm going to let you guys sing it yourself. Hello. Damn near wrong my blooming ears off. Rather toasted. Or rather filthy, it probably clean up. 1936, I think it said. Penny. That's all right, isn't it? We don't mind a few of them. Very nice too. Well, I thought it was a, thought it was a thimble. It still might turn out to be a thimble. It's very. It might be the end of a cane of some kind. It's quite thin. It's quite delicate, and there's a lot of pattern on it. So that should clean up nicely. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let me just show you, because some people have asked, how I've got the Simplex set up. Can we see that? I'm on Park 2, not Field 2 as I've been calling it. It's called Park 2. Apparently I've got it the wrong way around. Not the first time. And I have it on max sensitivity. The reason I've got it on Park 2, I realised that it's not as deep as some of the other settings. But this ground is so trashy, there is so much in it. The lead and tin and aluminium, and copper and iron. There's lots and lots and lots of it. So I have it on Park 2 and I concentrate more on the sounds that the machine makes rather than the actual figures. I very rarely look at the figures. It's the, it's the noises that I can differentiate what's what. So that's how I have the Simplex set up for anybody that's in the remotest bit interested. So park two, max sensitivity, quick recovery, not so deep, but I don't need it to be. And there you go, amongst all of the chatter and all the rubbish, the way I've got it tuned, the, the simplex, I concentrate on the noises so I can tell what's what. And you can hear little things like that. It's nice, isn't it? Get it in the focus, there you go. I don't think it's a button. And it's not pierced all the way through. But that's just a little token. It's all right, isn't it? Tiny little thing. But it made a different noise from all of the junk, so therefore you dig it. Dig it. Dig it. 1940 something or another. I can't see. 1940. Yeah, 1940 something. Thrifty bit. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. It's all right, not very old. Let's try and get something a little bit older, shall we? We'll keep going. Interesting, tiny little button. Nice little pattern on it. It's nice, isn't it? Gilded at one point, looking at the, looking at the eye on the other side. Yeah, around the edge you can see it was gilded at one point. It's all right, we like that. Lovely. Well, it was down deep. It was one of them, uh, you can just about hear the patter of the kangaroos running past as you get deeper and deeper and deeper. And we've got that. Now, let's try and get that focused. I don't know what that is. Feels. Well, I don't know. It definitely feels, it does. I thought, oh, hammered. It feels like it's hammered. That's what I'm trying to say. But that ain't silver. Probably one of them tokens, but it's uh, covered in writing and everything else. That should be identifiable. That'd be interesting. I think we have a look at that, don't you? We wait till we're back at the ranch. Nice. Nice. Down deep. Had to search. But we got there in the end. Lovely. No good. I can't wait anymore. Black current fields forever. There we go, and if I turn around, all yonder. 
Oh yeah, all of that, all of that. All of that. Brand new permission. Never been done before. I can't wait. I've come off my farthing orchard. Uh, well, before we just found that nice jet and there's still a farmer flying around. He's just giving me the thumbs up so he's perfectly happy. So I'm going to go. There you go. It's the same deal as, as the orchard. I've got the rows to do as long as I don't damage the root ball. Let's go for it. Never been done. I'll see you on the very first one that's worth having a look at. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. This is like a virgin. The simplexes. Very first recovery from the immense da -da -da -da. black current field. We call this one, and we call that one over there black current two. So this is black current one. The very first recovery by the simplex. No matter how you dress it up, it's it's a bit of a, a bit of a link from a chain. <laughs> yeah, uh, got to start somewhere. Rome wasn't built in a day, and I didn't find it in an hour. A nice plane, but a good neck bag seal that should uh, clean up all right. Black current field one, lead bag or bale seal, very nice. Well, I went down that side about halfway down that row, found that seal which I filmed, and then come back and I found a uh, a little furniture fitting after that I think so I've got 20 yards to go to my bag my bag's just down the end of the row and I thought this is this is hard going because this hasn't been turned over the orchard over there has all been turned over and the ground's rolled and rolled and rolled so it's easy to dig this is rock hard this is really really hard to dig so I thought wait till you've had a couple of days of rain and we'll get back on it and then I'll just get a little signal so this is the fourth hole in this field and I don't care if you think I'm a fraud, I don't care if you think I'm fibbing. Hammered. Hammered. Fourth hole. Hammered. Hammered! Yeah, all that business. I'm absolutely stunned. Thrilled. But stunned. I was just about to give up on it and think, no, I'm going to wait till it's raining. Or had some rain. Let's give it a quick clean so we can see what it is. There we go. Absolutely stunned. It's not often I'm speechless. Look at that. Wow. We'll get that identified. Look, there it is, look, clear as unbelievable. Four holes, one hammered. Sounds like a song to me. Quality. Watch again, we're back at the ranch. I'm going to do a little before and after. This is that token or whatever it is, but no idea of it. We've not even cleaned it's not even had soap and water on it yet. It's that shape. I'm going to do a before and after. We're going to spend some time on it, give it a wash, give it a gentle scrub, and we'll give it going over with the, uh, the cleaning pencil. Maybe get it straightened and we'll have a look and see what we can uh, decipher. See if we can get it identified. That'll be fun, won't it? Excellent. Right, I'll see you when it's done. There we go, guys. A bit of proof that I don't just throw these things together. There's a couple of uh, trays worth of finds. The computer there for my research. There's some research there. There's my script that's ongoing. See a script? Don't throw these things together. There we go. We're in the bar. I haven't cleared it off ready to do the shooting yet, so uh, <laughs> new video coming your way pretty soon. Right, okay, back at the ranch. Let's go through some of what we found this week. Oh, yeah, and the birds are here as well, as you can hear. The obligatory old buckles. I mean, that looks like it's an old military one. Wouldn't have said it's got much age. Now, that might have been enamelled at one point. It's been snapped off. It looks like it was a pendant of some kind. Or it might have been a... I was going to say a, a lip. Oh, I think that was a pendant at some point. Some of these, you know, they have enamelling left on them and stuff, but there's nothing left on that. Uh, elephant's tusk. 
obviously one of those miniature metal elephants but uh, yeah it's a elephant's tusk that is definitely what it is how about that now you know I like a thimble I'm putting that down as a thimble it could be the end of a cane a walking stick but I think, I think it's a thimble with the seashell pattern on it can't straighten it much more than that because it will just break but that's nice isn't it you know I like a thimble and there's the other one we found again can't straighten them too much because they'll just split and break but another old thimble bit of furniture now I thought this was a clasp and it held something in there like a like a fob like you know they suspended it from there and that gripped onto something that's what I thought there you go that's uh, 1936 George, George VI penny Georgie Six Thripney bit, an old Vicky. I can't even tell you. Look, just about make her out on there, but I couldn't even tell you what denomination that coin is. Lovely old token. I really, really like that. Now I reckon that's either 15th or 16th century, and I think it is actually something to do with the church. They used to give people tokens so they can come in for certain meals and things like that back in the day. That may be a church token. Can't make out anything on that side. There may have been something etched onto that side at one point. But I really like that. I think that's really cool. Uh, a bit of old squash lid. I thought that was something exciting when that came up. But uh, obviously nothing on it at the moment. That I can see. Then we moved over to the black current field. And we've got our bit of old... Oh, it even falls apart on cue. Bit of old chain. And another one of those which, you know, are they, I mean, to find two in one go would be a bit unusual, wouldn't it? Or are they just squashed furniture bits? I don't know. They're very, very similar. It'd be unusual to find two of the same things in one go, wouldn't it? We've got a key. We've got all the lead seals, uh, BF on that one. Uh, D and a on that one or N and A on that one. I haven't managed to trace these. I haven't spent a lot of time on them. We've got so many of these things. L and J. What's on that one? Can't really make it out. There is something on there. And then of course, <laughs> how about that? Edward the First. One of his pennies. Where is he? There he is, look, with his little perm. Can't really argue with that, can you? Absolutely stunning condition. Edward the first penny, so that's between 1272 and 1307. He was around. Bit of a rascal, but there you go. Weren't they all in those days? But that's not what I want to talk about this week. This week, I want to talk about our old Jetton. So let's sit down and have a little chat about that. Here we have our Jetton. We've done a big thing about Jettons before, or Jettol, as they are in France. Now this one was made in Nuremberg, in, or by a bloke called Hans Schulze. Now there was three or four Hans Schulze, and this one, I think we've narrowed it down, with the help of some of the geeks on the internet, uh, we've narrowed this down to Hans Schultze 1, so it's between 1553 and 1584. Quite, quite what it's doing over there, we don't know. Now there's legends around the edges, okay, but they were before spelling was standardised in Germany. So a lot of them are absolutely nonsense, what, what they say on them is absolute nonsense. I'll go through some of the, what the, the legends say on some of them in a minute, because some of them are, are quite corkers. So before, you know, before the spellings were standardised, one bloke used to make Jettons and he had 12 different uh, spellings of his own name. Right? Yeah, there you go. So um, this one is called a uh, Lion of St. Mark Jetton. And it's got a winged lion on it, which you see quite a, quite a lot on buildings and stuff in, in the Mediterranean. And it's a symbol of Venice. They were made in Nuremberg. 
because Nuremberg was uh, the centre of trade uh, from the middle, or oh, from the Middle Ages right through to the uh, early 1700s. Nuremberg was the place to be if you wanted to go and make some money. So there you go. That is a Nuremberg jet, and some of the legends have been roughly translated to um, uh, "Red today, dead tomorrow." Go figure. And uh, the one that I quite like was um, luck and glass are easily broken. So there you go. <laughs> quite what that means. I do not know. So there you go. A uh, couple of shouts out. I want to give a shout out to my mate Marcus. Thank you. I've got, got my stickers. And I also want to do a little competition. Now it's quite an exclusive competition. It's for people on South East Kent Metal Detecting Facebook page. Facebook, you know, at that place. Uh, somebody posted in there uh, earlier on in the week and said they were struggling to find somewhere to go. So if you're a member of that Facebook page, South East Kent Metal Detecting Facebook page, drop me a line on, via this, uh, on this video, at the end of this video, drop me a line and I will pick one of you at random uh, we meet up and I'll take you out on, on my new permissions. I've got pretty much about 100 acres now all to myself. So I'll take one of you out for the day if that's what you, you know, if, if you want. And uh, we'll do that. So leave me a, a comment on the on this page if you want to meet up and I'll take you out 100 acres and you can fill your boots. All right. So that's exclusively just for the South East Kent Metal Detecting Facebook page community. Drop me a line. And I'll take you out. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all on the next one. Mind there you go.